And, but none of the sort of violence that Thank Segalem Royale had predicted uh, might be Thank happening. you, Joey. Nicolas Sarkozy has entered party headquarters, the stage. We expect to hear from the new French president in a few seconds. We are 32 minutes past the hour. You're watching Sky News' live coverage of the French presidential elections, where the news is that Nicolas Sarkozy, the son of Hungarian immigrants, has won a substantial victory over the socialist candidate and he is the new French president and he is the first French president of non-native born French parents to ever get to the very very highest office of state. His name Sarkozy. It's a name we're going to get used to and here he is. My dear compatriots, by addressing you here tonight at a time which every one of you must understand is truly exceptional in the life of a man, I feel a true and sincere and deep emotion ever since I was small. I had the feeling of belonging to a tr an old and beautiful country, France. La France. I love France like one loves donné. a dear person that has given me everything. Now it is my France turn to return to France, Ce what France has given me. Tonight, my thoughts go to the millions confiance. of French people who have expressed their confidence in me. I would like to say to them that they have given me the greatest honour, which in my eyes means dignity, dignity by becoming the President of France. My thoughts go to all those who have supported me in this campaign. I would like to express my gratitude, to express my my gratitude, I'd like to say to my friends, to my family, to my partisans, to everyone who has supported me. But my thoughts go to Madame Royale. I would like to say to her that I have respect for her and for her ideas, ideas which were supported by so many French people. Respect, Madame Royale, means respecting the millions of French people who have voted for her. The President of France must love everyone, regardless. My thoughts go to all the French people who did not vote for me. I would like to say to them that Beyond, beyond our political differences, there is only one France. I will be the president of all French people. I will speak for every single one of them. I would like to say to them tonight that it is not the victory of one France over another. There is tonight only one single victory, the victory of democracy, of the values that unite us, the ideal that we share. My priority will be to do everything so that France, French people will always feel the need to understand and to speak and to work together. The French people has expressed itself. It has decided to break with the habits of the past. I will reinstate morality, work, respect and merit. I will honour national identity. I shall return to French people the pride of France. I will end with repentance, which is a, a type of hatred of oneself. The French people has chosen change. This change, I will apply it because it is the mandate that I have from the people and because France needs it. And I will do it together with all French people in a spirit of unity and of fraternity. I will do it so that no one is forgotten with the will that everyone can find his own place in our Republic, that everyone 
feels dignity, feels the dignity of being a man, what, what life has shattered, they will be helped, they will be saved. Those who have the feeling that whatever happens, they can't get out of it, they must be sure, they must feel reassured that they won't be forgotten and that they will have the same chances as everyone else. I call upon all French people, regardless of their party, their origins, their political party, that they unite behind, behind me. I call upon everyone not to let themselves be isolated, that they open up to other people who have different ideas, people who have different convictions. I'd like to, to call upon our European partners, with whom our destiny is very closely linked, that, to say to them that I've, throughout my life I've been deeply European, that I believe sincerely and deeply in, in the European construction, the building of Europe. I, I call upon our, our European partners to hear the voice of the people that need, need to feel protected. I don't want my European partners to, to, to be deaf, that they feel like the horse of Troy, I'd like to call upon our American friends and tell them that they can rely on our friendship in the, in the tragedy of, of history that we've faced together, that France will always be beside them whenever they need France. I would like to say to them that friendship means accepting that one's friend, friends can can think differently and that a great nation like the United States has the duty not to be an obstacle, act as an obstacle to climate warming because what we are talking about is the destiny of the whole world and that France will deal with this struggle. I'd like to call upon all, upon all the people of the, Medi of the Medi Mediterranean, Mediterranean countries that we must surmount all the hatred so that we can give way to a dream of, pay, of peace and civilization. I'd like to say to them that the time has come to build together a Mediterranean Union which will be a bridge between Europe and Africa what has been done in the name of Europe 60 years ago, we shall, we shall do it today to create Mediterranean unity. I'd like to call upon all Africans a call of fraternity and say to Africa that we wish to help Africa to conquer famine, poverty, and live in peace. I'd like to say to them that we will decide together a policy of immigration which is controlled. I'd like to call upon all those throughout the world believe in the values of tolerance, freedom, democracy, of humanity. I'd like to say to all those who are persecuted by dictatorships and tyrannies, tyrannies, I'd like to say to all the children throughout the world, to all the women victimized, that the duty and the pride of France will be at their side, that France will be at the side of Libyan, Libyan um, nurses who have been imprisoned. France will not give up. France will not give up. Women who are condemned by the burqa, women who do not have freedom, France will be by the side of the oppressed, of the whole world. That is the message of France, it is the identity of France, and it is the history of France. My dear compatriots, we shall write together a new page in history. This page in history, my dear compatriots, I'm sure that it will be great, that it will be beautiful. And from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to tell you, with the sincerity, the fullest sincerity that, is, that I feel at the moment, long live the Republic, long live France.
the man who will be president, Nicolas Sarkozy, 52-year-old, the son of Hungarian immigrants, and the first man in the history of the French Republic to be the parents of non-native-born French. It tells you something about France, where it is, where it's moved to. And that speech told you a lot about the man. Nicolas, they chant, along with the Marseillaise, the French national anthem. And in that speech, he talked about bringing back morality and respect and national identity. also talked about bringing a sense of unity. Now, that is unlikely if he goes ahead with the policies to reform and restructure France, there will not be unity in the short term. There will be a deep sense of discord and quite possibly a serious amount of violence. He paid tribute to Seconde Royale, said he respects her and her ideas, but he has very different ideas. He thinks people should be able to work more than the 35 hour week and that they should not be as taxed as much. He believes in nuclear power. She doesn't. He believes in taking an extremely tough line with Iran. She takes a slightly softer line. And then that interesting comment, the United States can count on French friendship and France will always be beside you. It was not beside the USA in the run-up to the Iraq war and has not been since. Now, Sarkozy would not have taken France to war, just as Chirac did not. But I think he might have gone about not going to war in a very different manner. He talked about controlled immigration, a sop there to the extreme right, who got a lot of their votes, although their vote collapsed, from talking the same language. And then uh, an interesting phrase, which he didn't have to say, when he started to talk about how to, with France's role in the world, this deep sense the French have of their mission in the world, uh, to stand up for the downtrodden and the oppressed. But then he said he will stand up for women who are condemned by the burqa. That will find a resonance in this country, a resonance in a lot of places, and will get a great deal of support. But it will also anger an awful lot of people. And I suspect that phrase, women who are condemned by the burqa, will be taken and used against him when, if in the future he takes a hard line on certain issues, it will, they will remind him of that and say you are anti-Islam. Well, that was the first speech, and uh, we think from here he'll move to the Place de la Concorde, where there are tens of thousands of people already waiting for him. Uh, they were listening to the speech on uh, white screens and uh, loudspeakers outside. Uh, Alistair Cole is uh, back with us from Sciences Po. Uh, Alistair, what did you make of that speech? I thought it was a, I thought it was an excellent speech actually from a, from a political perspective. He, he was very clear, um, confident, uh, delighted to have won, obviously. But it, but it, what, what, what struck me about the speech is it's the gravity of the the presidential function. And you'll notice that he started talking about I am now the president of all of the French. Yes. This to some I mean to some extent it's imposed by the function, but I think he probably believes it as well. I mean, the the campaign is divisive. It has to be. But once, once, the, once the individual inhabits the, the, the function of the office of the presidency, then uh, you know, they see themselves as unifying. They see themselves in some sense as a, as a monarch, you know, as being above yeah. divisions, as representing... Well, it's the head of state, isn't it? Head of state, absolutely. <coughs> head of state as well as... Thank you, Alistair. Let's go back down to Sarkozy headquarters. Greg Milam uh, standing by there, Greg. I imagine that went down very well. Uh, you followed the campaign, you followed him. I think many people for the first time will have heard him speaking at length. Uh, he's quite a speaker in that he seems to be able to emote and give that emotion without appearing to be acting. 
Well, yes, he does. And uh, I think that's why perhaps he's got such support when you realize, as you've been talking about, that he is a very divisive figure and many people in this country loathe him. I mean, there's, there's, no, uh, there's, there's no problem using that word. They do. And yet he's a man who has got 53 percent of the vote and has looked pretty confident about winning all the way through uh, this presidential campaign. So there is something there clearly that strikes a chord with many people in France. He admitted in this campaign that everyone had moved to the right. He had moved to the right. Uh, Madame Royale was more to the right than Lionel Jospin, the candidate last time. He said the only person who hasn't moved to the right uh, is Jean-Marie Le Pen because he can't. So he clearly has spotted there's something in France uh, that, that needed to be addressed. And that's why his, his campaign and what we heard there in terms of some of the issues that he wants to deal with particularly in this initial blitz that is promising, uh, have struck a chord and they have worked. And he will feel that six-point uh, advantage over Madame Royale gives him a mandate now. He'll go away and rest for 10 days and then come back with a, a huge meeting planned in July to start tackling those issues. There's some expectation here, I should say, that maybe he would, uh, he would have come out uh, onto the balcony here, but they've just said, we'll see you in Place de la Concorde. That's where the party will continue. But uh, they believe, these supporters believe, he's got that mandate and needs to act on it and needs to deliver on the things that clearly the French people want to see action on. They feel they've been stagnant for the last 12 years and uh, something needs to be done and they obviously believe that Sarkozy is the man to do it for them. Do you? Do I? Sorry, well, Greg. That was I didn't just... have a vote, of yes, course. Well, but, did, uh... No, you followed it. You followed his campaign. I mean, do you, do you think he's... What's behind my question, forgive me for not putting it properly, is many politicians say many things to get elected. He will now run in to what may be an immovable object, the barrier of the vested interests of France who will stand up, to, stand up against him. Will he try and drive through them or will he think, I tell you what, I'm enjoying being president. I don't want to cause too much fuss. Well, I think he will try, and clearly he's a man who is, is driven himself and has shown that in the last few weeks of this campaign. Of course, we've seen before that some of the things he's promising uh, don't go down very well with the French people. We'll all remember the riots of 2005. The response, of that, the response to that by the government, remember he was in that government, was to try to introduce new employment laws. Now, that went down equally badly with students and with, uh, with people who are on low, uh, low incomes. So we've seen them try before, and, and the question for him now and of course there are assembly elections coming up uh, in a couple of months time is how you do that how you deliver i don't think anyone doubts he's got the uh, he's got the drive he's got the intention he's said some very uncomfortable things in in terms of this campaign and he's won uh, so there's no doubt about the drive of course it is that resistance if it's there but what we have seen certainly from from voters who wouldn't necessarily have considered him in the past is that they realize this change has to come and they realize that 